I don't know if I'm going to go through and uh, kind of directly teach you anything here, but I want to give you a little introduction to this so that you're able to work on it and get something out of it. Talking about reciprocal trig functions is going to be putting together a couple things you already know. In theory, when you worked on our transformations unit, you learned about reciprocal functions in general. And I don't know if a picture would help, but if you if you had the graph of something, now there is a part way through here, kind of a, just a reminder. Here's where I put it. Uh, on the second page here, review graphing the reciprocal of a function. I put this in here not knowing how much time there would be in between the two units, but and on yours actually this did not photocopy that well. This uh, quadratic function here, so you might want to draw that in. The important points are it crosses its reciprocal right there and there and there, right? The values at one and negative one don't change. Okay, so that's this. Points where y is 1 or negative 1 don't change at all. Those are, you could call them invariant points. They don't change. If you want to learn a new word for today, invariant. Or you could put it in your own words if you don't like invariant. Uh, the, think about where the asymptotes occur. If you have that blue graph as the, the original graph, the asymptotes of the reciprocal occur where these are zero, right? Where that's zero, there's an asymptote for the reciprocal graph. Okay, because if the original function is zero, one over zero is undefined. And the same occurs over here. So you have points at 1 and negative 1 are invariant. They don't change. So the graph intersects its reciprocal there. And asymptotes occur where the original function is 0. And the reverse is actually going to be true as well. If the original graph had an asymptote, what do you think the reciprocal would have? When the blue one has a, has a 0, the reciprocal has an asymptote. If you had the reverse being true, if the original had an asymptote, what do you think its reciprocal might be? Yeah, it might be. A, it's, it's, you're going to see for these trig functions that this works both ways here, that um, where one has an asymptote, it's reciprocal. Because functions are reciprocals of each other. It isn't that one is the original and one is the reciprocal. Two things are reciprocals of each other, right? Whichever one you happen to start with. So hopefully you remember those sort of, uh, things as you try and do this. Um, as far as the graphs of these functions go, I'll go back to the names of them in a second, but it's your, I, I put on the graph here um, the graph of the original function, sine, and what you're ending up with here is hopefully a graph of the reciprocal of sine, which actually has a name that you can learn here. But we can go back to page one to put that down. But that's, that's more or less it, looking at, kind of analyzing it a little bit, seeing how it connects to the original graphs, looking for some patterns in the domain and the range and that sort of thing. But there isn't a whole lot to do, sort of do other than that in this, in this tutorial. It's, it's learning some concepts about reciprocal trig functions. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning here, flipping all over the place. You didn't learn this when you learned Original, originally learned trig in uh, grade 9. If you think about a right triangle, actually let's make some space here first. If you uh, think about a right triangle and how you originally learned trig, you learned kind of the Greek, classical Greek definition of trig functions between 0 and 90. If this is a right angle and this is the angle you're looking at, then you learned, you know, you learned that sine of that angle is if this was called the opposite side to that, and this was called the adjacent side, and that's called the hypotenuse, that's what you learned in grade 9. That works for angles from 0 to 90. You learned opposite over hypotenuse, and that sort of thing. There were three trig ratios you learned 
because there's three ways you can pair up those sides. Uh, that doesn't mean that those are not the only ratios you can write. There's three pairs of sides, right? There's If you have three things here, you can make three pairs out of them, right? Let's say you have three things, A, B, and C. You can make three pairs out of them. You can pair A and B, or you can pair B and C, or you can do A and B, A and C, right? There's three ways you can pair things up. So there's three three pairs of sides. You can look at the opposite and the hypotenuse. You can look at the adjacent and the hypotenuse, or you can look at the opposite and the adjacent. That's why there's three basic trig functions. You could do the reciprocals of those three, right? It's just someone told you that when you're looking at the opposite and the hypotenuse, you put that one on top. But you could have done it the other way, right? And so there's this other trig ratio called cosecant down here. Okay, cosecant. Oops. Cosecant's the reciprocal of the sine ratio. Okay, reciprocal of sine ratio. The abbreviation is CSC, cosecant. All it's equal to is 1 over whatever the sine ratio is. So, for example, if you know that in a... What triangles do you know here? You know these special triangles, right? Hopefully you've completely internalized them here now, and you know this is root 3, and this is 1, and this is 2. If you know that the sine of pi over 3 is what's the sine of pi over 3 if you use that triangle? This bigger angle is pi over 3. What's the sine of pi over 3? Root 3 over 2, right? If you know that that's true, the cosecant of pi over 3, just by definition that it's the reciprocal, what's its ratio? If you know a fraction for, for sine of pi over 3, you know that the cosecant has to be the reciprocal, yeah, 2 over root 3. Okay, these are reciprocals here. Those ratios are reciprocals. So if you know that on your calculator, um, boot up the old virtual TI-83 here. Um, if you know that you're in, uh, if you know that you have, you want the reciprocal of something, you don't have a cosecant button, but if you know that the, if you know that the, you want the sine of 37 degrees, it's that value, except we're not in degree mode, are we? Let's use radians here. Let's say you want the sine of 0.2 radians. It's that value. That's a bad one because it's almost the same as the actual angle. Let's try a third time here. Sine of 0.8 radians. Sine of 0.8 radians. Um, approximately that value. The cosecant of that, you can do 1 over sine of 0.8 radians. Or once you have the ratio, you can just do 1 divided by the actual ratio, 0 0.717, whatever, right? Dot, dot, dot. And you get that value. Pretty, I mean, I, did, I rounded it off, but you don't have a cosecant button, you don't have buttons for these, and they're not these, These are don't mix them up with these things, sine inverse, cos inverse. These are reciprocals, not inverses. If you know the, we're gonna put sine of 0.2 radians was roughly equal to how much? 0.72 or something like that. Then cosecant of 0.2 is roughly equal to 1 over 0.72, right? You flip the ratio over. This is the ratio on this side. Notice that I did not flip the angle over, right? This is the angle. Whether it's as a decimal or a exact pi fraction, don't flip the angle. Common wrong thing is grade 12s will say, Sine of pi over 3, or sorry, cosecant pi over 3. They'll say cosecant pi over 3 is equal to sine of 3 over pi. This is not true, okay? Don't do that. You don't flip the angle over. You flip the ratio over. That's important. Maybe you should make a note of that. 
flip the ratio, not the angle. Okay? There's two others here, which I'm almost out of time, but by the same token here, um, the reciprocal of cosine is called oops, is called secant. And you write one over cos theta. And the last one here, cotangent, is the reciprocal of tangent. One over tangent. Now you're going to go through and do the graphs, and you're going to look at some stuff here. I'm going to stop, and we'll start talking about evaluating some of these.